Hello, Spooksters. Welcome back to Sinister Streams, the online haunted museum. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that has been going on for about the past week and a half. We actually had trouble communicating with the children's spirits that we were trying to target with our experiment. Something negative had escaped the back room um, when we did our normal rounds of interchanging salt and reaffirming our salt barriers. Didn't end up filming this part, you guys, because honestly, I was beat, I was tired, it was in between filming, we had just finished the live stream, and I decided after that live stream that um, I was going to just swap out some of the salt and reaffirm some of the barriers to try to help with the negative energies that had been coming through from the hag, from the back room, because we have uh, a lot of demon bottles and objects back there that are a little more uh, dark in nature. We keep all of the really dark malevolent things separated from the rest of the objects. Now, if you guys have been longtime followers of ours, you have probably seen us talk about demon bottles or uh, energy traps that we use, and this is something that we have developed over the years. We use them in a lot of different ways, and Kat can probably explain it to you a little bit better and more in depth because uh, she is the one who pretty much makes them for us. So these are my cute demon bottles. Um, has three functions. One, um, to leave open in the space to cleanse the area. Two, entity removal, removing an entity from a person or a client. I mean, binding it to it. And the third way, just to leave it as a trap in a certain place. And if I go buy it and the string's in it, it kind of lets me know that something's in the bottle. So how did I come up with the idea of the demon bottle? <clears throat> I do a lot of reading and I do a lot of researching because um, we do remove negative entities and I'm always looking for the easiest way where we don't have to expel all our energy and be totally exhausted afterwards. So I was reading in the South, I believe it was in the days of slavery, they were always worried about evil spirits you look in the south and you'll actually they're called the bottle trees and there's you can look it up and there's trees in the south that have like they'll have like at 50 to 100 bottles just hanging in one tree and they hang them upside down and the purpose is, is that supposedly at night when the spirits <clears throat> are roaming and as morning approaches they need a place to go hide they go into the bottle and the beauty of the bottle is, is when the sun comes up, it hits the bottle and it neutralizes whatever's actually in the bottle. So I kind of use that premise for creating this bottle. Some cultures, they believe that a negative entity has to follow a string from end to end. Uh, among my research, I do find demons love the color red. It represents blood, it represents life, um, it represents taking of life. Um, they like the color red. There's a frequency to everything. Believe it or not, there's a frequency to the color red. But the funny part is, is the bottle isn't actually doing the work. Um, the bottle is just the outer coating for what's inside. Um, I do have herbs and certain things in here to neutralize it once it's actually entered into the bottle. And that's where my crystal that's in the bottle comes into play. You can program crystals to do certain things for you. I program them to pull in negative entities and to bind them to it. My most favorite way that I love to use them is during a house cleansing. Uh, like for instance, usually demonics love basements love closets they come and go out of closets so what i will do is, is i will open a window <clears throat> in the basement where i feel most of the negative energy is i will set the bottle there and at that point i will say i bind you into this crystal in the bottle i walk away and you leave it and it's my most favorite way i go on the other side of the room and i smudge with the smoke of the sage and it pushes it and the way the bottle works is this is a neutral zone in here and as the smoke comes the thing's panicking so it's either going to go out the window which is fine because i'm going to set up a barrier after and kick his butt out or it's going to get it's going to run into the bottle you capture it 
you plug it. I actually have shrink caps that go over the top. Set it in the window if you don't want to, if you want to reuse the bottle. And in the morning, the sun comes in, neutralizes, because this is very low energy in here. It's going to neutralize it. It's going to hit that crystal. And basically, the crystal is just going to push. And <clears throat> that's that. And you can unplug the bottle again and just speak to the crystal, tell it, keep pulling in those negative entities and then put it in a different spot in your house, maybe in your children's room under their bed. Mom, there's something under my bed. <laughs> Listen to the kids. <laughs> I guarantee it's there. So, um, I actually was contacted by one of our fellow spoosters, JD, and he kind of sparked my interest with this thing called a hagstone. Now I've known about hagstone, but honestly, I've never found a natural one out in the wild. So I never felt the need to have one in my possession, but I was actually gifted one and I've been wearing it. Um, this is a natural hagstone that was actually bought from a witch on Etsy and it was really cool. Um, he showed me the whole thing where you can actually program and charge it and the more you wear it the more it becomes attuned with your energy and helps protect you um there's a lot more <laughs> stuff that that person can actually explain to you if you're interested um you can check out her her etsy but um, I really, I have been wearing it and I've felt pretty good since the, since I've been wearing it. Um, in the mornings when I'm getting ready to come into the museum, I've been putting it on. So thank you very much, JD. He is one of our spooksters. And, um, also for those of you who don't know, we do have a spookster chat on Facebook, but you have to message me or somebody on the team or one of our moderators, um, to be able to be added to this chat. And this is just a, a chat where you can go on and talk to us on the daily and get like behind the scenes stuff. And we just um, all converse in there day to day about anything paranormal. And it's just been a lot of fun. So if you guys are interested in being part of that chat, um, you can join. Also for those of you who are part of the chat, if you get annoyed by the amount of uh, notifications that you're getting because so many people are involved in the chat and it goes off all the time, you can actually mute your notifications so you can check the chat whenever you feel like it, um, but you're not being notified every time somebody types something in that chat. So it's literally check it at your leisure and uh, you can just leave it unread until you get to chatting and it actually tells the people in the chat by the little icon who's actually uh, currently looking at the chat so you know who you're speaking to. So it's really kind of interesting. Um, we're trying to build that, build that community, um, build the day-to-day -day chat through our community and with our spoosters so we can all share um, experiences, share haunted objects, share just your thoughts and analyze evidence together on a daily basis. So for those of you who are big into uh, what we've been, what we have going on, then I would love for you guys to be part of that. So definitely uh, leave a comment leave a message somewhere. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That being said, um, afterwards, after I received this necklace, it was really interesting. Um, I was told that I was getting this on the same day that the hag came into the museum. Uh, she came in the mail and we added her to the collection. So it was really strange to me that I happened to get the hag donated by Adam and then all of a sudden I had another spookster completely unrelated, didn't even know about the hag yet, uh, offer in the same week to supply us with a hagstone for protection. Could totally be coincidental, but um, in my experience, there are no coincidences. I really feel like it was kind of a message from the hag. And then on top of that, you guys, we had something weird happen. I was sitting in the living room with Cat and Shane 
and I noticed something live on the CCTV. So I actually picked up my phone to try to capture it. So I'm currently watching the cameras and um, we have the other two shut off for now. But on this side, what's really weird is like there's nothing here in this frame. But if you look here, it almost looks like there's a face. And it's actually in front of the sign. What? What is that? Like, there's actually something there. But there's not. Oh my god, I see it. Do you see there's nothing here? At all. In front of the sign or anything, but look. Yeah, I see that. What if I go around up? And yeah. You don't want to go up there and wiggle the curtain? See? It's in front of the sign. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's, is that the boy? It, it I don't know. That's it. Yeah, look at it. It's got ears and everything. You can see the nose. And the cheeks and the eyes. Look at it up here. Close up. Look. Like, I just, I don't know. It's just weird, like, because yeah, it's, it's not. It's kind of creepy. There's nothing here. No. At all and it, it's definitely like the rounded part is in front of the sign so yeah. it's just kind of weird yeah. nothing. 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 I don't know I mean it I'm does not definitely look like a face but I'm wondering if it's matrixing from the curtain but I know what right. you're saying it's front of the I think if I go up there and shake that curtain that's gonna disappear on you mm, maybe it's just weird I've never seen that before It didn't move it. No. It's not no. moving. It's still there. No. no. What'd you knock down? In between his legs. That's it's still there. It is. It's not the it's not the sign. Oh, it's still there. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It looks different now. Like since you went up there, it, like look, it's changing. Like it no, it's changing to like a skeleton face. Oh my God. It's like emaciated. Like you can see the the bones in the face now. I wonder if my energy playing over there look, kind of messed it up. Look, do you see? I see it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe my energy. Right. Oh my god, I see the skull you're it's talking skull. about. This it's is the side, side here, and that's then this is the big back of the cranium. The head, yeah. Oh, but it there's changed. also still a face here, though, if you take off the chin. It's changing Look, again. It just changed eyes. again. It just changed again to a regular face. Yeah, it's back to a regular face. Oh my god. What the heck? It's like an optical illusion. It just changed again. Wow, it really Now it looks like, like an old woman. It, it's really formed into a female face. Look at that. What oh is going on? Oh, that's creepy. That's shit. weird. I don't know, man. Yeah, it looks like a dog. It does. But if you get out of this view, wow. there's, nothing there's nothing on the other one. And you don't even see any resemblance of nothing. And it would be right where... If it was picking it up on one camera, if it was a night vision, we'd pick it up on both. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what is that? It's just weird. That is weird. I don't know. It could be matrixing. It could be nothing, but it's just interesting. So, really strange is now I just went upstairs to check the back door um, here, and it was actually unlatched, which you can't see the latches on the on the camera so I'm gonna have to adjust the camera angle so we can actually see the padlock so we can see if anything messes with it um, but I was upstairs because I was checking for that spider and I needed some sea salt for working on some more protection and we noticed that the face is gone now in both cameras so I mean it's not there you can clearly see there's nothing in front of the sign anymore um, but I noticed that the back door is, was also, it wasn't, the padlock was still on because they don't have the key, but the actual lock 
on the door was off. Like, you know, the little, what's it called? Latch. Latch hook. Yeah, the latch hook was off and the door was actually open about, you know, an inch and a half. The door doesn't quite match up for the padlock, so the padlock keeps it shut, but it doesn't, like there's a gap uh, when the lock is just on. So we use the hook and the lock to keep it closed and the hook was off. I'm not saying that it's anything paranormal, but with all of the things that have been going on since we changed the salt in the box with the clown and added in the crucifix and changed up the salt, fresh salt, because eventually it absorbs that negative energy, right? I mean, that's my theory anyways. I had um, experienced overnight from us doing the salt changing that I got uh, kill written on my neck so um i don't know if it's all connected or if these are separate energies doing these different things but there was definitely a face there and now it's completely not there like before you could see that there was like a mound in front of the sign so it was like actually in front of that sign this is a topic that's very controversial um some people may see something and some people may not and it's totally okay if you guys don't see anything. I could be just looking into it. Um, you'll hear me say that it could be uh, matrixing, any type of trick of the light or anything like that. But I, I really just, I felt weirded out by this. But what was strange is I've never seen this before. So to me, it stuck out. And it to me... At the end, it really, really reminded me of, like, the hag. So I wasn't sure if this had to do with the hag or if this had to do with the other energy that I irritated. So I ended up putting a crucifix in with the clown doll from our case in 2017. This doll has not seen the light of day since that case. It, had be it has been in a cardboard box since that. Um, and then we put that cardboard box inside of a steamer trunk that we put in the back room when we ended up uh, rearranging things. I don't think the clown was very happy when I went in there and I switched out the salt that was in its containment and put a crucifix in there um, because I ended up having these weird scratches show up on my neck. Now, I honestly didn't feel them at the time. It was really strange. I woke up with this really, really horribly drained like feeling. I was so tired. I couldn't do anything. And then these scratches were down the side of my neck and what's really weird is they're taking an extremely long time to heal because I mean this happened uh like a week ago and they're still there you can still feel where the scratches were they were like raised up and uh, I actually shared the picture of this in the spookster chat because sometimes I'd like to ask your guys's opinion when things are going on um and somebody actually sent a picture, that picture where they actually wrote kill over the scratches because the scratches themselves resembled that word. And what's really interesting is if you look at it both ways, it looks like it says kill one way, but if you look at it backwards, it says kill another way. Like it's like mirror images of the word kill. Again, where these scratches came from, I don't know. I never get scratches on me. It, there's no way that it was anything. I, I, I didn't do it with my nails. These were really thin, long scratches. Very strange. And they actually drew blood, you guys. Like these, these actually like blood droplets were there dried on the surface where these scratches were. I don't know. But the way that I felt, um, up until I got this, really, I mean, like, this was going on a few days prior to this coming in the mail. And then 
I did a few more things. I had Kat make the holy water. We started the whole filming process of showing you guys us kind of resealing the door again, um, doing all of that. And I'm starting to feel a lot better now. We're starting to get the hang of the containment again. But I went through like a few days of solid craziness. We were seeing black masses, like in the middle of people's beds, like we'd walk by Kat's room, there would be a black mass in the middle of her bed. We would see black masses in corners, um, the feeling of being watched. And it, it was like, I was getting flashbacks to 2017 when we were doing, dealing with this energy. And I just, I instantly knew what was responsible for this outbreak, this en this outbreak of negative energy in the museum, I instantly knew what was responsible. It was that clown. A mother brought home a bunch of items from an estate sale. Spotting the sign on the way home from work. Free for the taking, must be gone tonight, the sign read as she pulled alongside the mound on the lawn. She was a mother of ten children. Taking advantage, she piled what she could carry into her vehicle not even bothering to look close into what she was grabbing. She assumed her kids would make quick work of sorting through the leftover junk. By the time she was on her way again, she could barely see out the back of her car. The giant mound filled the trunk and back seat with an old suitcase thrown on the very top. The lock was rusted shut, but she knew that one of her boys would make quick work of it when she got home. Hoping to get home before it was completely dark, she started to feel uneasy as she climbed back into the driver's seat. She started hearing a strange noise come from the back of the car. A kind of scratching noise. When she focused harder on the noise, it would stop. Assuming the noise was from some of the junk she had loaded into the car, she rolled the window down some for fresh air. Starting to feel flush and uneasy, she continued on pulling into her road. Now completely pitch black, the scratching noise was back, this time louder. Scratch, scratch, scratch. She couldn't park the car soon enough. As she went to get out of her car, she was pulled back by an unseen force, as if a hundred hands were holding her from behind. The scratching became louder. She managed to open the door of the car and roll sideways, releasing the grip of what had held her. Leaving the car door wide open, she ran to the house. The pathway glowed as the motion lights sensed her running past. When she reached the door, she fumbled for the knob, forcing her way through, slamming it behind her. Met by her eldest at the door, they laughed. They told her she wasn't getting enough sleep, and she hoped they were right. Eventually, the eldest boy went outside to lock up the vehicle. He entered with a suitcase in his hand. He had found it on the lawn when he went outside. She froze puzzled as to how this could be. That night, the strange activity continued. The motion lights on the walkway would turn on as if registering movement outside. At first, they assumed it was a stray cat or some small animal. Throughout the night, the motion lights continued to switch on, one by one, as if something was walking up to the house. The next day, they offloaded the pile of stuff into the garage. When she finished, she walked inside to find her teenage boys prying open the old suitcase. Her heart began to pound. Flashes of the strange things she had experienced the night prior pricked at the back of her brain. She realized the back of her neck began burning. The sound of the lock giving way caught her attention. A brown paper bag was inside, worn and taped with erratic duct tape strips. Without hesitation, they tore open the paper like it was nothing, and a red nose poked out. Eventually, they revealed a soft-bodied clown doll, and they had freed it from the containment of its wrappings. It was from that moment on she felt it in the house. Three long scratches had appeared on the back of her neck. The manifestations began to grow, all seeming to target the mother. Unfortunately, it took three weeks for her to realize the events that had begun in her home were directly tied to the clown, released when they opened the suitcase and removed the bindings. This was later explained to the mother by the team as they cleansed the home and removed the doll. 
Then finally, a containment ritual, binding the entity to the doll. It is believed this doll was the cause of something being released in the home. A parasitic entity that will attach to the person weak enough for it to sink its claws into. Before the team contained the energy of the doll, it was believed to be the cause of a suicide close to the family. The individual showed no signs of any mental struggles before coming into contact with the doll. The mother claimed the entity would whisper to her at night, claiming ownership of her. She began to suffer sleep deprivation and delusions. Her children were the ones who seeked out answers. The doll wanted to feed off and destroy all those in its path. It has already greatly impacted the lives of the innocent family, and left there, it would continue to destroy all who encountered it. The doll has now remained in the collection of dark occult items and has yet to see the daylight since 2017. It doesn't matter how much experience you have with negative energies, sometimes when your frequency gets low or you make a boo-boo, things leak in. And all it takes is just taking a step back, reaffirming your boundaries, cutting your cords again. I had created a cord when I went in there and not thinking, being tired, I went to bed without burning that cord and it allowed that energy to leak out and to scratch me in the middle of the night. So being a, a museum owner, there is always um, a battle going on where you have to keep the balance between the good and the negative energies so that everybody can coexist in a very healthy environment, including us. We need to keep our protection barrier and our energy safe as well. And that's why you see us use light pendants and different things throughout the museum because that allows the spirits to turn them on and get energy without actually draining our energy. So we give them those things so that they can do that. I will play TV for them so that they can get energy. I will come in and we'll, Shane likes to play music for them. So there's a lot of different things that we do to feed the energy here, including even leaving offerings of like food. Um, we'll give the doctor a cup of tea or coffee. Um, you've heard of food for the dead. It's the basic premise of leaving an offering and the spirits take the energy from that offering. They may not eat the food, but they take the energy from it and there then they can use that energy to manifest and what was really strange you guys is again I wasn't filming because I was trying to get this done as quick as possible but when I went to put that crucifix in the steamer trunk on top of the box with the clown I went to lock the clown in the steamer trunk with one of the padlocks that I have the skeleton key to. Um, it's like a main key goes to all of my locks in the museum. I have a lock on the actual trunk that has the clown in it and a lock on the door. Now, when I finished putting the salt and the crucifix in the trunk. I went to take this brand new lock, mind you, because these are all brand new locks. I locked it around the trunk and I could not get this lock to shut. No matter how hard I tried, I would put the key in trying to turn it. Maybe the tumblers were not meeting up right, whatever. I spent like 10 minutes trying to get it to lock. So then I ended up going and getting Brandon, um, thinking that maybe because of my arm injury that I was having trouble putting the muscle behind it to close it. So I had Brandon come in. He messed with it for another 10 minutes. Um, he couldn't get it closed. This little tiny lock could not get it closed. So I was like, okay, if we can't, padlock the box back up. I'm going to at least padlock the door closed. I'm going to go mess with the lock or get a new lock and then I'll come back in and mess with it later. So we got this door to padlock which was fine and then we latched the door and we went out and I got outside of the museum you guys not even two feet outside of that door and I'm messing with the lock as I walked out and click the lock locked. It would not let us lock it in the museum at all, 
But the second we crossed that barrier that Kat had reaffirmed the uh, right before we did this, the lock locked. No problem. So then I ended up coming back in and I was able to get it on that trunk. But what was really strange is the next day, I came in and I was talking, I don't remember who I was telling, but I ended up telling somebody that the door, the the padlock was still locked, but the actual latch hook was off and the door was open about an inch and a half because it doesn't quite meet up with the the way that the padlock is so it does open a little bit even when it's padlocked so that's why we have the double hook going on and something had un unlocked the bottom lock and allowed the door to be opened some so again was it mad that we put the lock on the on the steamer trunk and so they opened the door trying to get out again or what like just as I'm filming this, you guys, I'm getting this, like, creepy chill up my spine. It's funny because it's like when I talk about it, I feed that energy and it, it makes that connection again. I have to burn those cords every time that I even think about this energy because it's that strong. It instantly makes a connection and starts feeding off my energy again. I don't dare right now do an investigation on this object because of how intense it is what I want to do is I want to wait until we have the isolation room set up even better um, because I can isolate it away from the other energies and really maybe just leave devices in there and film it without me having to physically be in the room. Um, but I just, I don't really want to open us up to that energy right now because we just managed to get it contained. I swear to God, I just saw something move above me in the mirror like a black mass just went whew, right over my head. I saw the reflection. Yeah. Okay. Freaked out. Um, I'm going to get out of here because I don't want to be by this door anymore right now. <laughs> um, that being said, if you have not subscribed, please do so. We have lots of uh, cool live streams coming for the end of the month. And next month, we're going to be investigating Tom, which is our little fellow that has been pushing the car around and doing some cool stuff. So I have some new... in. Uh, I have some new investigations and new experiments planned and new things coming. So uh, definitely subscribe, stick around, comment below what you guys think about that weird face, that weird manifestation that we captured, what you think about the clown. We narrated the backstory of what happened to the people who originally owned that clown. Links are in the description. You can find our merch store. You can find our Etsy store where you can buy haunted objects and spirit dice from the museum. Spirit dice also handcrafted by me. So, see you guys in the next video.